Welcome back to the 9 to 5 Dropouts. I'm Josh, and today we're going to be going over the top 5 maintenance items you should be doing. So number one is greasing your bearings. This is actually really easy, and I'm going to show you what you're going to need to do this. First, you're going to need some bearing grease. Now, this is the brand that I've been using for years. I've had absolutely no problems. Here's the info on the grease here. Um, it's just a red grease, and you can see it's high temp, and you can see it's heavy duty. Uh, the second thing you're gonna want is a grease gun, several pairs of gloves, and probably a couple of rags for this because it does get a little messy. Let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna do is pop this little cap off. There should be something similar here. And inside of here, there should be a rubber boot. And all you're gonna do, get a flathead screwdriver. I'm just gonna peel that off there. If you can take a look inside, you know, you shouldn't see, obviously you shouldn't be seeing any chunks of metal or anything or any kind of dirt debris. And what you're looking for is that little nipple. Hopefully you can see it. This is a Zerk fitting right here. And you're just gonna put the grease gun on there. And typically what I do is for every thousand miles that I've traveled, I put one pump of grease. Using the one pump of grease for every thousand miles has never failed me. Something to be mindful of is do not put the grease gun on that Zerk fitting and just start pumping grease into it. If hard, you need to stop immediately because you could very easily blow out the back seal on that bearing and all your grease will pour out the back. You will know if this happens after a couple, after going down the road, road a little ways, you'll see grease all over the place under your camper on the rims of the camper. You do not want that to happen because then you're going to have to either replace that seal yourself or take it in for service. So I'll show you how simple this is to do. So you're just gonna take the grease gun, put it on the Zerk, make sure there's no debris on the end of your grease gun before you get started. Place it on the Zerk, and like I said, I've traveled maybe 3,000 miles, we'll call it, before, since I last done this. So one, two, three pumps of grease, remove it, that's more than enough. So something you're gonna be looking for when you're doing this as well is, these are your dust caps. And what you wanna do is kinda of inspect this, make sure there's not a lot of heavy cracking or it's there's chunks missing out of this. What this does is, this keeps all the dirt and debris, dirt and debris from the road from actually getting into your bearing housing here. So you wanna make sure that these are in pretty good condition. I can tell you right now that um, the tire right behind me, this one actually has a small crack in it and I had to use some right stuff, which is like a gasket uh, material, and I, I fixed it for now, but I have these on or new ones on order. So once you grease it, I'm just gonna take the dust cap here, push it in. Now it might take a couple tries because it just sits along that ridge, and you're just gonna place your cap back on, and that's it. Easy. All right, let's move on to the next item. All right, here we are back. This is the second maintenance item we're going to talk about. But to bet not a lot of people are greasing the shackles. So, shackles are it's basically just like the suspension of your camper. And if you have a travel trailer or a fifth wheel, chances are you don't have shocks on it. And what the camper uses is a, ser a set of leaf springs here. And it pivots all on this point. Now these, what this is called is a wet bolt. So it's a bolt that goes through this bracket and there's a bushing inside. On the other end there's a nut. And the wet bolt is actually just a bolt, but in the middle of it there's a hole so when you pump grease through this Zerk fitting right here, it, you can see the grease coming out here on the sides. Now we're going to put grease in these. You don't need to over grease them, so I'm not saying put it on there and grease it till there's just grease dripping out. You just want to see a little bit of the new red grease pop out from underneath the old grease. Once that's done, all you do is wipe this as clean as you can get it, 
and you're good to go. So this is also another easy one. And I'll show you what this looks like right now. And here's the Zerk fitting. So you're just gonna place it right on there. And this one you're just gonna pump until you see some new grease pop out from underneath the old grease here. Now, you might get one of these Zerk fittings. That's good, I just saw some come out. You might get one of these Zerk fittings where you put it on and no matter what, you just can't seem to apply enough pressure. Well, sometimes just due to all the road grime and the fact that this is on the camper, it's not that well protected, there's no caps on this, you can get a little bit of corrosion on the, um, right here where this little ball's at. And it, it's actually easier to sometimes just replace the Zerk fitting. Those of you that are not mechanically inclined or have no idea what I'm talking about, these are actually pretty easy to get out. So you can just get a cheap adjustable wrench here and you're just gonna put it on there and you can see it's starting to spin. And you should never tighten these like too much, you know, just snug, just snug the thing down. And get kind of a booger there. All right, there you go. So see there, it's threaded. It's just a little hole and you can see that little ball bearing there at the top that top could get corroded there and then when you're putting the new one in same thing just in reverse you're just going to place it up there hand thread it in so don't force it otherwise you could strip the threads and then you're just going to tighten it up so once you're done greasing your wheel bearings and you're done checking your shackles as well as grease to make sure you wipe up all the excess grease there's nothing worse than having to get back under the camper, sliding under here and getting grease all over yourself just because you're lazy and you and you decided just not to wipe down everything when you were done. Not only that, but all that grease is going to collect road grime and dirt and small rocks and stuff. It's nasty. You just want to do with it. Wipe it off there. Save yourself some trouble. All right, here we go. Next maintenance item. All right, let's be honest. How many of you are actually doing roof inspections? Whether you're going to buy an RV or it's just you need to you know, do the maintenance on the one you own, this is something you should be doing at least every month. And I used to wait three or four months and long story short, years ago we had a RPOD 178, I believe it was, and I wasn't doing the roof inspections on it. And we pulled the camper down to Florida had a huge thunderstorm roll in and that night water started pouring in all over the place on that camper could this have been avoided absolutely um at the time i had no way to repair it we were like trying to like put we were basically just doing damage control putting blankets and stuff underneath so it wouldn't get in the mattresses and create mold next morning i went out and i looked at got on top of the r pod and I looked at the seals and sure enough, the lap sealant had separated from the trim. So here's what I'm talking about. So you see here, when you're doing a roof inspection, you wanna go, I know it's, it's gonna take a while, but you need to go around and look at the trim and you need to make sure that this lap sealant is actually connected to it. So you can see right here, I have two little holes not real concerned about that no big deal if that was any bigger i would probably put more caulk on it but as you can see here I, after three months of owning this camper i actually had to come back up here and re-caulk this and because it was completely separated there was this plastic trim right here was hanging off and there was nothing between that and and the roof material here so you're just going to go alongside and you're just gonna look at everything. Make sure there's no major gaps. And uh, if you are, like, see, look at that. Here's, here we go. Perfect. So here's a bubble. Let's open that bad boy up. So here's what's gonna happen. You get something like that. I don't know if you can see down in there, but that is where you're gonna get water intrusion. Something just like that. And, Here's a smaller one right here. So I'm actually glad I decided to do this video today because I just saved myself some heartache. So that's the kind of stuff you're looking for. Bubbles that are getting ready to pop or could pop. Um, any sealant that's missing here. 
And another thing that people don't really think about is yes, the, there's you know there's sealant all around this ladder right here, but you should don't now I'm not saying pry, but you should try to just lift with the edge of your thumb, try to lift it up. Because sometimes this will actually um, doesn't seal down correctly and it'll just be like a pancake flopping up and down and I've seen that before too so that's something to be wary of um next and you can kind of see here on the roof like where that when they before they lay this material down it's glue underneath here and I have seen RVs where the glue um, has failed so you'll get like sections of this roof material that are loose now it could be I don't know whatever you have rubber EPDM I think there's like another one or TPO or something like that but you seem to go along your roof look at the condition of it make sure there's no real heavy staining on it again you need to be you know just barely pulling up with the edge of your fingers or your thumb checking all that so here's what I use it's a Dicor lap sealant and if you don't really know the difference between a lap sealant and a caulk, you will typically find lap sealant on the roof of your RV and you will find caulk on the side of your RV. Uh, kind of like you can see that right there. That is caulk. So here's the next item. And I can almost guarantee, since we're getting into the, uh, the top, you know missed maintenance items that nobody's doing this so check it out so here we are so I have two Coleman Mach 15,000 BTU air conditioners on my camper now if you can see it here on the coils of my air conditioner definitely have some dirt um, looks like a bunch of like Insects are in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop the top off this thing and I'm gonna show you how to properly clean it. See me taking the cover off here, so I'm gonna give you a better look. So these coils really aren't too bad, but I'm just gonna go ahead and clean them because it's really just kind of the end of summer here. So something to note, before you take the cover off and before you spray any water or any of the um, coil cleaning spray or solution, whatever you decide to get, you need to make sure that your RV is disconnected from the power. You want to disconnect power so that way you don't get shocked. Something else to note is every air conditioner has a capacitor. So what that is, and I'm going to show you a, a brief glimpse right here. This is a capacitor and what it does is it's kind of a hard start function for your air conditioner. Um, when you turn your air conditioner on, it, it draws a lot of amperage and current and what this capacitor does is it stores that so that it's a lot easier and it won't pop your breaker whenever you turn your air conditioners on so I'm going to leave a link right here so you can see how to discharge the capacitor if yours is exposed on your air conditioner so here we go we're now we're gonna get into the cleaning of it so I just finished spraying this down with the coil cleaner. Here's, uh, I'm gonna leave a link to the one that I used on here. You're gonna want to let this sit for about 15 minutes or whatever the one on, you, you know you purchase says on the back. And then um, you have to be real careful. You don't wanna overspray and get the cleaner all over the roof because 
a lot of them do have uh, muriatic acid or some sort of acid and you don't want that to deteriorate your roof so make sure you're just spraying it on the coils um, if you're not going to put something down like a tarp underneath here I would recommend to make sure you scrub the roof right after you do this maintenance with uh, soap and a soft bristle brush and then really do a good like clean water wash down after you do this maintenance so I'm gonna let this sit for about 15 minutes and then I'll show you how to spray it off the hose and you can also use a fin comb and I'll leave here's a picture of the fin comb right here And what that does is you can actually, it's, it is exactly what it sounds like. It's like a, a soft bristled comb or, or brush that you can go this way. Never go against the coils here or the fins. You want to brush down and that's going to get all the dirt to go downwards. And then you should be able to spray it out with the hose right here. So uh, we're going to wait, like I said, 15 minutes and then we're going to rinse this off. Okay, so something to note is my capacitor is actually located in here. I didn't have to worry about too much of you know getting overspray in the water on it, but uh, here, check out the coils. They should look something like this. And something to note is when you're spraying this down, make sure you're not using a straight stream. You know, you want it to, you don't want to, because it will bend these coils. Like I'll do it here in the corner, but you can actually see how easy that was. To bend over a little bit and i'll straighten that out with the comb that i have so and you can see just how much junk was in this thing like look at all you know the dead bugs and everything like it was overflowing with it so this is definitely something i would recommend doing at least once a year if not every six months if you're running your air conditioner you know the the, the whole year so like I said, you need to give the roof a good scrub down after you do the air conditioner maintenance. And I just went ahead and decided to clean the whole roof of the camper, so check it out. All right, there you have it. The air conditioner maintenance is done and the roof is spotless. So that's what you're looking for you know like i said you want to remove any um the hard stains you know if you have any like a little bit of mold or mildew on any of the caulking make sure you get as much as you can out something you can do to help with this and if you don't feel like scrubbing as much is get a pressure washer now with that you have to be mindful you know you don't want to put this thing on the zero degree straight stream and here it is, the number one thing that nobody is doing is testing your breakaway brakes. Here's your breakaway system. So what this is, is this connects to your truck. And as you can see here, I just have a little bread tie. You don't wanna, you don't wanna secure this to the chain. You just wanna keep it from dragging on the ground. And this goes up to your uh, breakaway switch. Now this runs off 12 volt. So it is actually running off my 12 volt battery that's on my camper. Something to note is you need to make sure that your battery is charged before you tow your camper. Yes, your truck or your tow vehicle will provide power. However, in the event of an actual breakaway, that could come unhooked. So these breakaway brakes, these emergency brakes are gonna rely on the 12 volts coming from your battery. So that's why you want that to be fully charged before you travel. So what we're gonna do here today, cut. What we're gonna do here today is I'm gonna pull the breakaway switch and then I'm gonna try to pull forward the camper with my truck and I should feel resistance. If I feel resistance, we are good to go. You can slide the breakaway switch back in and continue as normal. If not, then you need to have your camper immediately serviced. So I've pulled the breakaway switch and all it is, is this right here slides in. You'll probably have something pretty similar and you're just gonna pull that out and now you're gonna pull forward and see if you feel resistance. 
So something else to note before you do this test is you actually want to unhook your camper from your truck so that it's not uh, relying, sorry, not relying on the 12 volts that's coming from the plug. And it should look something like this. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull forward. All right, so I've rolled forward about two feet and the camper stopped itself. And I actually received an error message on my screen saying, reconnect trailer brakes. And I could definitely feel a hard tug. Uh, these wheels are definitely locked in place. I actually have the truck in drive right now and it is pulling against the camper and we're not going anywhere. So that is a successful test. So that is exactly what you want your results to be. All right, so the test is complete. So now you're just gonna go ahead and hook up everything back to normal. Slide the breakaway back in. And something to note, make sure before you do this that your truck is in park and you have your e-brake on before you slide that switch in because the trailer is going to lurch forward just a little bit. Thanks for watching the show. I really hope these um, maintenance tips helped you out. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. And I'll be happy to uh, answer everything, any questions you have. Thanks for watching. Bye.